Hey, darlings. The huge door of the restaurant opened and a dark man, like a storm cloud, quickly jumped out from inside and onto the street, dragging a young girl with him. Their gloomy faces betrayed a completely spoiled mood. That's it. Don't set foot here again. He was very indignant. It used to be one of the best restaurants, but now it's some kind of diner. The food is tasteless. The service is disgusting. And also this post in the middle of the corridor. They turned into a decent establishment for God knows what. A dissatisfied man helped his companion into a luxurious premium car, got behind the wheel and stepped on the accelerator, vowing never to come back here. The restaurant's administrator, Theodore, a slender, brown-haired man of about 25, seemed puzzled by the couple's departure. In the last two months, they have lost almost all of their regular customers. Since the new owner took over the management of the establishment in his crooked hands, everything has gone wrong. An attempt to establish its own, completely new order resulted in the loss of the most valuable employees, including the face of the establishment, an experienced chef, a virtuoso in his craft, Dmitry Petrovich. Even the destructive effect of his unprofessional intervention did not confuse the boss, but, on the contrary, inspired subsequent reshuffles and changes. A lover of party life decided to transform a famous high-status restaurant into an entertainment club. After that, the establishment completely collapsed. The audience changed radically, revenues fell, as a result, employees' salaries were cut and everyone began to slowly scatter in different directions. Employees trained by the previous owner were in demand at other restaurants. They were replaced by people of dubious appearance and reputation. In fact, only Fyodor and the junior cook Alexei remained from the previous team, who now heroically carried the entire kitchen with them. The guy turned and walked to the principal's office with a sigh. Something had to be decided immediately. Things couldn't go on like this. Pavel, a handsome young man, almost the same age as the administrator, was sitting in a leather chair, with his legs resting on a table full of papers, which he had been trying in vain to organize for several weeks, and was openly making a fool of himself, playing paper balls in the trash cart. All these piles of documentation with numbers, Tables and obscure terms bored him to death. A few months ago, unexpectedly widowed, Pavel hoped that his late wife's restaurant would help him improve his own finances, but the establishment only added problems and headaches. How did his wife Karina manage this complex mechanism? Previously, it seemed to Pavel that the director's task was only to occasionally appear at work reminding employees with his menacing appearance who the boss was and stealing profits. In reality, it turned out that not everything is so simple. The restaurant business has its own characteristics and specificities. It is necessary to delve deeper and understand all the intricacies of the subject, keep the workforce in good shape, build suppliers, and keep up with the latest developments in the field. A good restaurant cannot afford to go with the flow. Otherwise, it will certainly drown. Constant changes are required. Menu, dishes, interior, entertainment program. To the young widower, everything seemed boring and uninteresting. Only now did he understand what kind of burden his late wife was carrying. Pavel stopped his work, frowned and thought. Looking at the ceiling and remembering the day when Karina fell from the bridge in her car and died. The body, however was never found. But in this place in the river, there was a current very fast, and the investigator did not even doubt that it was a terrible accident. The wife no longer had any relatives. His father died before the wedding, having only managed to bless the bride and groom. And they were only married for about a year and a half. Most of their family life passed in misunderstandings and silent quarrels, and in recent months their relationship has completely collapsed. The wife was bogged down in work and did not want to delve into the peculiarities of the easy and freedom-loving nature of her chosen one. He hoped she would support his desire to have fun and enjoy life to the fullest. No matter how much he tried to convince her to give up everything and go abroad, to the warm sea, 
where she could sit all day with a cocktail on a sun lounger under a palm tree and not think about anything, Karina declared firmly that she intended to continue her late father's work, and what she inherited from his inheritance is that bank accounts should work for the future, and not for wasting life now. Tired of repressing his impulses and desires, first to please his late father-in-law, then to avoid scaring his conservative wife, the young man no longer wanted to live according to the rules of that family of workaholics. Pavel honestly did not understand why they should work if there was money, and it entered the account regularly. As soon as his wife started talking about how good it would be for him to do something, his mind went crazy. Clubs, parties, get-togethers, intelligent girls, free from moral principles. The crazy nightlife surrounded him in its chaotic, chaotic dance. Until, one day, Karina, in the middle of the game, took him out of another nightclub, took him away from a half-naked girl, put him in the car and declared in a tone that she did not tolerate fights. That's it. I'm fed up. Tomorrow I'm going to file for divorce. Pasha, leaning back in his seat, gave a drunken, mocking smile and asked, Well, come on, darling, give it. Have you decided how we're going to divide dad's inheritance? The young woman looked him up and down and said in a calm tone, No, dear. You will remain the same with an empty wallet. You deserve nothing, neither by law nor by justice. Do you want to lead such a wild life? Please. But now, without my money. At that moment, Pavel came to his senses for the first time and realized that she was right. Without her, he will have nothing to live for. This thought made the man sober instantly and immediately find words for repentance. With a prayer in his eyes, he asked Karina to think a little and not commit rash actions. For some time, the man, having settled down, sat at home, pretended to come to his senses and even began to consult his wife about his future work. Karina looked at her husband incredulously, but no longer spoke out loud about the divorce and willingly supported his desire to do something useful. And then the tragedy happened. At that moment, when the police told Pavel the terrible news over the phone, he was overcome with conflicting feelings. Somewhere deep down he felt relieved. Now there is no one to pressure him and teach him about life. From now on, he is his own owner, and after acquiring the right of inheritance, he is a rich widower. Justifying his behavior as an attempt to drown his pain, he returned to his former dissolute life. In the club, Pavel met a pretty girl Vasilisa, whom he once tried to meet in that wild period, until his wife arrested him. And Vasilisa herself did not want to date a married man. The guy felt that she was not as simple as she seemed at first glance. It took a lot of effort to ask questions about her. The girl was the daughter of a high-ranking local official. And then Pavel became obsessed with the idea of getting an even more profitable marriage as a wife than his previous one. He literally went out of his way to charm his new lady and make a positive impression on his future father-in-law with enormous connections and almost limitless possibilities. From now on, he had no room for error. Pavel took on the image of a successful businessman, a grieving widower who needed warm family relationships. The calculation was correct and his venture was rewarded. Vasilisa willingly took on the role of savior of the unfortunate man and soon agreed to marry him. But then, as luck would have it, the restaurant's well-oiled mechanism began to malfunction. Even the apparently brilliant idea with the club did not produce the expected effect. Everything turned out exactly the opposite. What kind of misfortune is this? Money is needed now more than ever, but it won't last long. The wedding is in a month and a half, but it was impossible to arouse suspicion on my father-in-law. It is necessary to maintain and maintain the image of a serious groom without any problems. There was a timid knock on the door and the administrator entered. Despondency and depression were visible on his face. Pavel Sergeyevich, I can't do this anymore. That's it. I'm giving up, he said in a frustrated voice right at the door. 
The owner took his feet off the table and sat down, as befits a director. You cannot fire an employee who is ready to work for a few pennies. He definitely can't handle the situation alone and is unlikely to find someone else. Well, Fedia, what happened? Pavel asked, portraying extreme concern on his face. Customers are leaving one after another, he complained. They don't like the new format of the establishment. They criticize the kitchen and only Lyashka is left. He can't cope alone. Pavel in no way wanted to be distracted from dreams of a cloudless future life and get involved in this rat mess. But the situation forced him. He had to at least pretend that everything would not completely fall apart. Good? What to do? You say. The administrator scratched his head and began hesitantly. I would like to add salary. Not now, frowned the owner. We are going to promote the club. So I promise everyone bonuses and allowances? Well, then at least a taster for the cook and an assistant. Otherwise, Alexei is completely sewn up. He would have to fill his hand. Otherwise, he is an emotional and vulnerable nature. If he tries too hard, he will have to completely switch to frozen semi-finished products. Where can I get these workers for you now? The director asked in a dissatisfied tone. He sighed heavily and thought, No, you can't ruin the kitchen. After all, he boasted so much about his successful restaurant to his future father-in-law that he decided to celebrate his wedding here. Another brilliant idea came to Pavel's mind. Let's go. He waved his hand at the administrator and ran out of the office towards the exit, straight into the street. There the director looked around. Luckily, there were practically no passers-by. The man decisively approached some girls passing by. Hello. Would you like to work in a restaurant? They silently looked at him with suspicion and hurriedly retreated as quickly as possible. But Pavel was already in a good mood. Noticing a beggar woman wrapped in rags sitting next to her on a bench, he shouted to her. Ah, beauty. Well, come here. The administrator, widening his eyes in horror, whispered in a low voice. Pavel Sergeyevich, are you kidding? But he had already suffered. He loved jokes and spontaneous pranks. No way. Here you have a kitchen assistant and a taster in one. And all for a salary, thought the director and asked the woman who appeared. Are you going to work in a restaurant? Immediately, a new plan for her matured in his head. He could promote himself and add bonuses to himself in the eyes of his fiancé and future father-in-law while helping the poor. Vasilisa has a particular obsession with the topic of charity. I will, the tramp unexpectedly agreed, and the administrator immediately groaned and rolled his eyes without hiding his displeasure. Inside the room, the beggar took off her old, torn scarf and warm clothes, and before them appeared a young girl, almost the same age as them, with short hair and a very elegant appearance. His hands were surprisingly clean. There was no unpleasant odor. The only thing that immediately caught my attention was her rather large belly. The young woman was clearly pregnant. The director immediately started laughing. Wow, I wanted to hire a worker, but it ended up being two at the same time. So lucky. The girl didn't respond, just looked down. Cook Alexei, a tall, chubby guy with glasses, looked at his new subordinate with a sigh. But there was nothing to be done. Maybe it will help in some way. Good afternoon. My name is Alexei. I'm the cook here, he introduced himself kindly. And I'm Alina, the girl answered quietly, looking from under her eyebrows at the giant in a chef's outfit. But they didn't really get to know each other. Dash two schnitzels and two Caesars shouted the waiter on the threshold proclaiming the visitor's order. Alexei immediately began to fuss, taking the preparations out of the refrigerator. He was confused by her chaotic and clumsy movements. Taking first one thing and then another, he threw food on the floor, took new food from the refrigerator and, as a result, got lost and forgot what he had done before. Alina at first silently watched her torment, then carefully tied her hair into a bun 
washed her hands thoroughly and began to quickly chop the ingredients for the dishes. The cook was about to be indignant at the unauthorized interference in the cooking process when she suddenly realized that she was doing everything right and this help made her work much easier. Thank you, he murmured, frying the meat in a frying pan. A waitress burst into the kitchen hugging the bartender. They laughed loudly at some joke, not paying attention to the fact that the few visitors were listening to them. They clearly didn't care about the prestige of the establishment here. Upon seeing the new girl, they looked at each other and laughed even louder. The red-haired, freckled bartender, through tears, panting, roared. I thought Fedka was joking, but here it is. This is hilarious. Yes, our director is acting strange again. The waitress supported him. Where did you come from, dear? From which dump? Although the new employee did not have enough money to buy new clothes, she did not lack pride. Ignoring the rude couple, she began peeling the vegetables. Under the barrage of his stupid jokes, not a single muscle moved on his face. They mocked them a little more, but without waiting for a response, they lost interest, calmed down and returned to the hall. Alexei looked at his assistant with pity and reproached himself for not finding the right words and not defending her. Don't pay attention, they're like that with everyone. He tried to alleviate the situation. They intimidated me too. They still call it a seal. Alina turned around and smiled sweetly. I don't pay attention, she replied calmly. Why do you allow yourself to be called that? After all, you are a chef. Yes, what kind of boss am I? exclaimed the guy angrily. His chubby cheeks turned red and made him look like a huge bun. Everything always gets out of hand. I'm a real clumsy, he scolded himself. The main thing is that these masterpieces are produced at home. At least request a Michelin star, he continued. Reason? But at work, it's just some kind of vicious circle. Everything ends up somehow clumsy and dull. For the first time in many years, he was able to speak openly. For some reason, this unknown girl aroused confidence in him. My soul immediately felt lighter. Such a passionate and sincere speech moved Alina. I wanted to reassure this complex but obviously good guy and help, at least with advice. You're just nervous and organizing your process incorrectly, she explained. And you just relax and understand that here you are a creator. It's up to you whether the customer will return to this establishment. The girl looked with a smile at the boy who was listening to her with his mouth half open and suddenly went to the door that led to the corridor and called the cook there. Look, she said in a low voice, pointing to the couple sitting by the window. Here are these young men and women you are cooking for now. Then he took his companion by the hand and said something to her. For some reason, it seems to me that these are words of love. Seriously, dear ones, she asked, looking at Alexei. Are these yours? Yes. They could have gone to the burger place, which is around the corner, or you could just stay at home and order pizza, but they came to visit you, Lyashka. You want to give them gastronomic pleasure and mood to may they remember this wonderful night for a long time? The guy looked dumbfounded at the couple cooing as they waited for their order. It was the first time he looked at his work from that perspective. Alina, in turn, nodded at the ready-made dishes waiting to be served and suggested. Lyosha, imagine that you are an artist creating a bright canvas, and I will give you brushes and mix paints. The cook liked this metaphor. He suddenly transformed his body, constrained by constant tension, relaxed, and a sparkle of creative inspiration appeared in his eyes. With quick and precise movements, he assembled an incredibly appetizing salad and creatively decorated meat dishes. For some period, time and space ceased to exist for him. Alina involuntarily fell in love with the spiritual expression on his face. After the waiter raised his eyebrows in surprise and with unusual care took the finished masterpieces to the customers, Alexei ran twice more to the hall door to watch the reaction of his guests to the dishes into which he poured all his soul. And every time I returned to my workplace satisfied and happy.
Now he was not afraid of any new orders. The fear of screwing up and messing up somewhere suddenly and completely disappeared. The guy was filled with an irresistible desire to create and share his creative energy with people. Throughout the evening, satisfied waiters, who today received generous tips, looked at the cook with respect and conveyed words of gratitude from the customers. From that day on, Alexei no longer had to drag his painful cross. He flew to work on the wings of inspiration, where a fragile girl with a huge heart was waiting for him at the entrance with an invariably kind smile. The newcomer herself, with her balanced and relaxed character, joined the team calmly and easily. His appearance at the restaurant unexpectedly affected the entire atmosphere of the establishment. Friendly relations were established between Alexei and Alina. And one day, he decided to tell the girl a sad story from his childhood, which marked the formation of his character. At the age of 11, his father left them and went to another family, where he soon had another son. The impressionable Lyosha then got it into his head that he was not good enough, as my father chose another son. He lived with this bitterness in his soul for several years. This apparently led to self-doubt and low self-esteem. In general, I don't remember my father. My mother and I lived together all our lives, Alina admitted unexpectedly, a silent sadness lurking in her eyes. The young man nervously bit his lower lip and decided to ask the question that had been tormenting him for a long time. How did you end up on the street? Alina shuddered and looked away, and then realized, Ah, why did I sit? I still have a lot of things to do. Realizing that the girl was deliberately avoiding the question, the boy did not insist. This is probably a very painful topic for her. Just like pregnancy. For sure. She'll tell you if she wants. The appearance of this mysterious assistant in the kitchen had a surprising effect on the young chef. The acquired inner harmony and self-confidence were transmitted from him to the world around him. Now the team and customers saw Alexei completely differently. But the guy knew who to thank for such dramatic changes in his life. Glancing furtively at his assistant's calm, focused profile, more than once he found himself thinking that he was admiring her as if under a spell. He was not embarrassed by the young woman's shabby and faded clothes. Her presence somehow turned the guy on in a special way. Not even her belly ruined the impression. She was beautiful, like Madonna. More and more, their silent and meaningful glances met, and an exciting spring mood hung in the air. Only Pavel did not like the positive changes in the restaurant. This strange young woman, whom he himself had invited to work, was now causing him great irritation. And today the director looked dissatisfied at the former homeless woman who was peacefully cutting vegetables. Why are you digging there? He yelled at her. The floor by the sink is wet. Go clean it up. You'll catch up and then I'll answer for you. He grumbled. The girl immediately grabbed a cloth obediently and wiped away the water droplets. This silent submission further infuriated the young director. It was as if she deliberately fell into his hand constantly. Pavel couldn't help but poke her in some way as he passed by. The charitable gesture of hiring a beggar did not have the desired effect, but the kind Vasilisa sincerely admired his noble deed and therefore it would be unwise to get rid of the irritant now. Yes, he didn't like this Alina. He himself could not explain this sudden hostility. Although not, there was a reason. This pregnant beggar somehow subtly reminded the guy of his dead wife, whether in the look or in the movements. More than once, he even caught himself thinking that he was deliberately mocking and humiliating the new girl, or rather not even her, but Karina and her person, wanting revenge for the time when he was forced to obey his wife and live according to her rules. This Alina, of course, performs her duties well and the cook is now praised by customers. But this similarity of hers, bringing back unpleasant memories, haunted and infuriated her. Well, it's okay. I wish I could survive the marriage and throw off this yoke together with all the Fedias, Lyashkas, Alinas, 
sell the restaurant and forget it like a bad dream. No, he was born for something else thing and deserves better. Thinking about the prospects that would open up after the wedding made Pavel smile. The future father-in-law secretly admitted that he was preparing a surprise for the newlyweds, a big honeymoon trip abroad. It was there that the legal husband would work on Vasilisa and persuade her to do what he had failed with Karina. The new passion is completely different. She has a soft and flexible character. Mold whatever you want. They will stay to live abroad, and the father will do everything for them for the sake of his beloved daughter. And finally your dream will come true. Alina went out of the kitchen into the hallway and again noticed a strange man with cold fish eyes and a sports bag in his hand. His lifeless gaze gave him goosebumps every time. About twice a week he looked for the director, but no one knew who this visitor was. I have no idea, Alexei answered the question indifferently. Maybe it's about the wedding. It's none of our business. Alina did not agree with him. It is unlikely that a person with such a frightening appearance could organize celebrations. Something was dirty here. The wedding day has arrived. Pavel did not hesitate to show off his future relatives. Something. He could do it. I hired a designer to decorate the space and three more chefs for the night. The rest of the money was spent on a host, live music, and a huge cake with ornate decorations. Everything was going very well. The bride clung to the groom with a happy look. The father-in-law with a glass in his hand was already making the third toast, looking kindly at the bride and groom, and the guests were noisily having fun, rejoicing in the creation of yet another social unit and the opportunity to eat and drink deliciously. Just as the talkative host finally announced a short break, Alina unexpectedly appeared in the hall. Everyone was busy communicating, and no one paid attention until she got on stage and took the microphone. Dear guests, I have an announcement, the young woman announced in a calm voice. Pavel was even surprised by such impudence, blushed deeply and roared menacingly. Why did you get there? You should be in the kitchen. Well, quickly go home. Well, let him say, Vasilisa interrupted him. Perhaps she will receive congratulations from the team. Let him talk. The father-in-law supported his daughter in a drunken tone. Pavel bit his lip. There was no point in conflict on a day like this. And the girl on stage continued. Thank you. You are wonderful people. I'm really sorry that you decided to join a bastard like Pavel, who ruined his wife's business and is now selling here. Something prohibited on exchanges. What? The groom jumped out of his chair, looking at his father-in-law in fear. What are you talking about, you idiot? Without paying attention to his rudeness, Alina continued. And I would also like, Pavel, to convey greetings to you from the other world. And she pointed her hand at the female figure that had just appeared in the twilight, as if from nowhere. Petrified Pavel, as if enchanted, watched her approach until she reached the illuminated place. Hello, Pasha. It was Karina, alive and well. She stood in the middle of the hallway, as he had seen her last time, as if she hadn't disappeared anywhere for several months. The guy's legs gave way, and he fell heavily into a chair. But how is this possible? All the guests froze, not understanding what was happening. The bride was also confused with surprise and could not utter a word. The general silence was interrupted by the groom's unusually hoarse and high-pitched voice. You? Was all he could say. I, the vision smiled. Didn't you expect to see me after deliberately damaging your car's brakes? That still needs to be proven, he grumbled in response. Clear, she said calmly and looked around. Civil police officers entered the hall and tied the groom's hands. The guests woke up, their excited murmurs swept through the hall. A woman screamed in fear. The bride and her father ran towards them, trying to understand the situation. What's going on here? Can someone explain it to me? The high-ranking father-in-law shouted nervously, raising his hands in confusion. Immediately, 
The investigator entered with slow steps and handed Pavel an arrest and search warrant. You are accused of attempted murder and possession and distribution of narcotic substances on a large scale. Karina just stood still and watched all this action distantly. Not understanding how I got to this point, remembering where it all started. For as long as she could remember, she and her father had lived alone. My father was an interesting and prominent man, and rich women were also attracted to him, and from time to time he had brief affairs. But he never brought anyone home and never officially introduced him to his daughter. He lived by his own principles and rules and did not tolerate anyone contradicting him. He spoke about his mother sparingly and reluctantly. She died suddenly a long time ago. For the sake of his daughter, he was ready to do anything. Karina studied at the best school, was an excellent student and activist. From the first grade, she found herself at the same desk with a modest boy, Kolya, who, until graduation, carried his briefcase behind him and cast admiring glances in her direction, although he never admitted his friendliness. During her school years, the girl got used to perceiving her neighbor as a loyal friend. It never occurred to him that strong emotions were ravaging his soul. Only after graduation, accompanying Karina to a foreign university, where her father had sent her to understand the peculiarities of the modern economy, Nikolai, stuttering timidly, confessed his love. Karina was a little surprised, smiled and hugged the boy in a friendly way, telling him how to treat him. They both felt awkward, and since then they have practically not communicated. Studying abroad was easy for the girl, but the homesickness never left her. She missed her father very much and was ready to break free and leave at any minute. It was then that she and her father really fought, for the first and last time in their lives. When Karina, after finishing her studies, decided to return home against his wishes. She couldn't be there anymore. She didn't like it. And the air is not the same, and the people are strange, strange. And her father dreamed so much that she would stay to live in a country with a developed economy. He believed it would be better for her. But Karina didn't want her fate to be decided for her. She arrived, placed an international diploma on my father's desk, and firmly stated that she wanted to live here, next to him. After such an adult and clear declaration of intentions, the man's heart melted and he finally calmed down when his daughter agreed to head his pride, the best restaurant in the city. It was during this period, it seemed then, completely by chance, that Karina met Pavel. The tall, fair-haired guy shone with good manners and tried in every way to charm his chosen one. He didn't leave her even a step. Now she realized that she did not know Pasha, either before or after the wedding. Like a chameleon, the cunning man changed the color to the desired one in an attempt to please. So she was incredibly surprised by how much they had in common. Interests, music, books, movies. Such coincidences simply do not happen, she thought. This meeting is not accidental. Pasha is the only one, for life. At that time, the father was already very ill and did not hide his desire to find a worthy match for his daughter, so as not to worry about her future any longer. Pavel also managed to deceive him. Having given his consent to the marriage, the man immediately seemed to relax and stopped fighting for his life. Very soon her soul disappeared forever. With her father's death, her daughter's world turned upside down. Karina was so used to him always being there. You can come or call at any time. Share your joy or, on the contrary, cry. Just listen to your native, loving voice. Dad always had time to talk to his daughter. After waiting several months, the groom began to persuade Karina to formalize the relationship, saying that this was her father's last will. The girl agreed, and they just signed discreetly, without celebrations or festive fuss. Karina dedicated herself to her work. She wanted, in memory of her dear father, to make his idea, into which he put his whole soul, even better. I was thinking about opening two more restaurants of this type. In her dreams, 
She always saw her husband as a reliable support. More than once I invited him to join the family business. But after the wedding, Pasha, when they replaced him, now lived on a grand scale, spending his wife's money left and right, taking everything in life to the fullest. Upon hearing from her friends how her husband was having fun on the side, Karina at first was very worried. Then she simply became angry with herself for having made a mistake in person. And when the woman found her husband drunk and smoking with some girls, she decided to get a divorce, which she immediately and decisively told him. The whole world finally fell apart into little pieces the day Karina drove to a new supplier out of town. The memory of that unfortunate accident gave him a shudder. I only remembered how I stepped on the brake pedal when entering the bridge and felt how it unexpectedly and easily fell into the void. Karina lost control, and the car hurtled somewhere along a steep slope to the river. Time slowed down and the girl looked in horror at the edge of the cliff that gradually and inevitably approached her direction. The clawed paw of fear squeezed my heart tightly and shackled my entire body, preventing me from moving. Well, that's all, flashed through the girl's head. A strong blow to the chest and head on the steering wheel knocked her out for a moment. From a sharp and penetrating pain, I woke up in the river. The room was quickly filling with water. Karina, without realizing what she was doing, pulled the door and it opened. At the last moment, she managed to escape from the car, which immediately sank sharply. The current caught and agitated the unfortunate young woman. Panic and fear of following the car into the dark abyss forced her to fight. With the last of her strength, she tried to stay afloat, rowed, rowed and rowed. Then there was a complete fog in her head. It is unknown how long it floated with the flow. She only came to her senses when someone violently shook her shoulder, trying to bring her back to her senses. A piercing pain enveloped his entire body. It was wet and cold. Karina moaned, her voice responding with a weak, hoarse sound. Opening her eyes, she saw the face of a young girl in front of her, which looked familiar. Looking around, she realized that she was lying on the river bank. Her clothes were wet and stained with mud. Apparently, she had just been pulled from the water. How are you feeling? asked the stranger and leaned over her with concern, looking into her eyes. Terrible, Karina whispered with mischievous lips. In fact, she felt a terrible headache, and it also seemed to her that everything in her chest was broken. Furthermore, she was shaking with chills and became unbearably cold. My name is Alina. What's yours? The girl introduced herself. Karina, she replied in a weak voice and suddenly asked, Have we never met before? Alina shrugged her shoulders uncertainly and asked, What happened to you? You can go? But realizing that the rescued girl had a fever, she ran for help. Literally a few minutes later, she brought her neighbor, a huge man with stubble on his wide face, who picked up Karina in his arms as if she were a feather and carried her straight to a nearby small house. Alina took off her wet clothes and laid her on an antique metal bed with a huge, lush feather mattress and covered her with two comforters. Karina watched the entire savior with half-open eyelids and couldn't remember where she saw her. Alina was thinking the same thing at that moment. A strange feeling of deja vu took over her from the first look at the unfortunate girl's pale face and did not leave her until this moment. Passing by a large mirror hanging on the wall, she suddenly stopped and looked at her reflection. Suddenly, an epiphany came. Certainly. This is where this incomprehensible feeling comes from. This Karina is strangely similar to herself, to Alina. Once in bed, the rescued woman felt as if she had fallen into a thick, warm cloud that carefully enveloped her with soft, fluffy edges. It became warm and cozy, the pain lessened. Her eyes closed on their own, dragging her into a heavy and restless sleep, where she again fell sank and swam without stopping. Through the dream, a quiet conversation was heard. Mitra Fanovna, won't she die? 
Maybe we should call a doctor after all? A familiar voice asked worriedly. Well, you should have called. Someone grunted dissatisfiedly. Why did you call then? Sorry, I didn't mean to offend. I'm worried about her. A lot? She's so pale and she's had a fever for an hour already. Karina opened her eyelids with difficulty. Through the fog I realized that it was already late at night outside the window. Mitra Fanovna turned out to be a small, dry old lady, clean and tidy in a white handkerchief, as if she had just returned from church after an evening service. She was probably a local healer. Karina didn't trust alternative medicine much, but she liked this grandmother. Some inexplicable, intoxicating aroma emanated from her. Something between the smell of incense and a bouquet of wild flowers. She moved her narrow, wrinkled palms over Karina's body and then probed her chest and head, which caused a sharp pain attack. Then she said busily, Well, everything is clear here. A serious bruise on the chest and head? There doesn't seem to be a fracture. In the evening, I will serve you some herbs, she taught the girl. You I will brew and drink, but apply them like a compress. Don't worry, everything will pass very quickly. The healer was silent, then frowned and said, intrigued, there's something else. She looked at Alina and ordered her decisively. Come on, come here, give me your hand. The girl extended her palm in surprise. The old woman clung to her with one hand and with the other, she took Karina's palm and suddenly froze, looking at one point and muttering something under her breath. After sitting like that for about a minute, Karina opened her mouth to call out to the witch. Well, maybe she fell asleep, snoring softly. She's quite old. But Alina widened her eyes significantly and put a finger to her mouth, indicating, be silent, don't worry. The old woman finally came out of her trance and joined the girl's hands. Do you know you are sisters? She asked unexpectedly and simply. The girls looked in shock at Mitrofanovna, then at each other. What? How is that? Came out of Karina's mouth. The old woman shrugged her shoulders. I see that you are sisters and, moreover, intrauterine, twins, that means, separated very early. Then she added. I'm never mistaken. They showed me such a photo. From where? Asked the stunned Karina. From there, the sorceress repeated carefully and pointed her slender finger upwards. Everyone remained silent, digesting the information received. Then Karina shook her head confidently and said firmly, No, you just saw that we are somewhat similar. No, my father would have told me. That can't be true. Maybe, suddenly said Alina, who all this time, with bated breath, watched the rescued girl. Everyone looked at her, waiting for an explanation, but she was visibly nervous and hesitated. So finally, gathering her thoughts, she told everything she knew. Alina and her mother have lived in this small house their entire lives. As she grew up, the daughter started asking questions about her father but her mother just frowned and repeated the same phrase. So and so father abandoned them and left. My mother worked as a school teacher and gained a reputation as a rude person. The woman treated her students and Alina with equal rigor and did not disappoint anyone. The students did not even hide their dislike for the excessively principal teacher. The girl was offended to hear all the epithets attributed to her. She still loved her mother, and was sure she loved her back. She just never spoiled herself and always demanded everything. But Alina believed that thanks to this, she became a good person. The girl graduated from school with a gold medal and followed in her mother's footsteps to a pedagogical institute. True, thanks to her naturally softer character, she developed a completely different approach to children, for which she suffered more than once from her more experienced mother. After listening to their arguments, Alina stubbornly continued to hold her line, considering her own method more effective. Unfortunately, excessive frankness and professional distortion did the mother a disservice. Once she went to the city and missed the train, 
she had to wait until the last one, almost at night. Eyewitnesses said that the woman started making harsh comments to some group of drunks at the police station. They, without hesitation, beat her to death and fled. Alina remembers well how she arrived at the hospital and went to her mother's room. At first, she couldn't recognize her, and then she cried a lot at the bedside. The face is burgundy and blue, the right arm and collarbone are broken. But the most important thing is that these scoundrels managed to break the woman's spirit. They have trampled on your faith in what is bright and good, faith in truth and humanity. The woman simply didn't want to live anymore and felt like she didn't have much time left. Before her death, she told Alina about her father. The parents met when they were very young and fell in love at first sight. It was like an electrical discharge. It seemed as if sparks were falling from the eyes. A bright and passionate romance ended in a sudden marriage. Those around them could not understand how two people with such a stubborn disposition and explosive character decided to unite their destinies. Two representatives of the fire element tried to get along, and for some time they succeeded. With the arrival of twins to the family, the young father thought seriously about the future. He had grandiose plans, but in a small village he saw no prospects. Unfortunately, he was unable to convince his wife to try her luck in the big city. She decided to stay and work at a local school. No amount of arguments, persuasion, or ultimatums could change his choice. Over time, the young spouses completely ceased to understand each other. Each insisted on his own. Increasingly, they argued and then remained in defiant silence for several days. A real scandal broke out in the family when two-year-old girls accidentally damaged the desk's document drawer with paint. Parents, seeing that all passports, birth certificates, and notarial papers were irreparably damaged, were horrified, but reacted differently. The mother wanted to beat her daughters in the heart, but the father categorically spoke out against it, trying to prove that they were still very young and did not understand anything. But the woman insisted stubbornly, shouting at the height of her anger that she was a certified teacher and knew how to raise children, that she could live without him in this matter. The conflict grew like an avalanche. Mutual rebukes rained down from both sides, like a torrent of lava from a volcano, and long-buried grievances spilled out. Furious, the wife threw her husband right in the face. My children don't need a father like that. What can you teach them, loser? The man could not tolerate these hurtful words. All good, he shouted. If that's the case, I'll take a daughter and leave. Let's see who will raise her best. Oh well. Well, get out. Do you think I'm going to cry? Yes, we can live very well without you. Mother was hysterical. By tacit agreement, the father took Karina who clearly preferred her father, loved to be with him and sit on his lap. Alina got closer and closer to her mother and, consequently, stayed with her. This is how the stupid adherence to the principles of unbalanced and stubborn parents separated the sisters. Alina couldn't believe what she was hearing from her mother, but she couldn't reproach or question her in such a serious condition. For the first time in her life, the daughter saw tears in the iron lady's eyes. Soon the mother died. Sadness tore at my heart, but thinking about my father and sister gave me no rest. Alina even tried to find them, but after the divorce her mother left her and her daughter her maiden name, and she never had time to tell her father's details, Karina listened with bated breath and, without taking her eyes off, watched her sister. His soul suddenly opened the secret door and let in the missing puzzle, which was immediately constructed in the empty space of his inner world. Finally, an epiphany came. This was what tormented her all her life, the feeling that something was missing, long lost, something with which there still remained a vague, invisible connection. Another soulmate? This incredible story just didn't fit in my head. Your parents did bad things when they were young. And why? To prove something to each other? And what did they manage to prove? These heavy thoughts completely deprived the girl of strength and she, 
closing her eyes, lay back on the pillow, exhausted. She was more worried about something else now. Karina had no doubt that the accident was arranged by her husband. It was no surprise that the day before he said that he had put the car in for repairs and was taking her car to go somewhere. He was painfully tense all night after returning, but what then? How can I prove that it was his work? Returning home now would mean exposing himself to the danger of another assassination attempt. Anxious thoughts completely absorbed her consciousness, and the girl herself did not understand when she fell asleep. Something heavy, but very warm and soft, warmed Karina's chest. In her sleep, she reached out to free herself from the weight, but groping for a large, hairy living creature, she immediately pulled it back in fear and opened her eyes. Right in front of her face, she saw the huge glowing green eyes of a cat nestled on her chest. The bright red beauty looked at her with sincere surprise. What should you be afraid of? It is me. Alina's voice was heard nearby. Marisenka, leave Karina alone. Better go eat. The cat slowly bent down and with a feeling of self-dignity went to the kitchen, confidently clinging to Karina's side as she said goodbye. A smiling Alina entered the room and, drying her hands with a towel, asked, So how are you? Sorry, I didn't keep an eye on Maruska, but it's even good that she stayed with you. They say cats can heal. Karina moved, her head and chest hurt less. Perhaps this is the effect of Mitra Fanovna's herbal decoction, drunk before bed. Or perhaps it is the merit of her new friend, Marusia. In any case, the rescued woman, with difficulty, still managed to get out of bed alone. Alina, carefully supporting the girl, took her to the bathroom and then sat her down on a comfortable chair in the kitchen, which her mother loved, often staying in it until late at night checking students' notebooks. The hostess had already managed to fry fluffy pancakes and prepare tea in the morning. Sitting across from each other, the girls ate breakfast, not knowing how to start a conversation. Yesterday they were unable to talk, and today an awkward silence hung in the air. The cat approached and began to affectionately rub its fiery fur on one girl, then the other, as if pushing them to start a conversation. They laughed and then, looking at each other and realizing that they were thinking the same thing, they laughed heartily. Maruska was successful in his idea. The tense situation was immediately relieved. Marusia recognized you, Alina said, tenderly looking Karina straight in the eyes. In fact, she is hiding from strangers. This means that you are one of ours. She smiled and replied, I'm very happy to have a sister. Now they looked curiously at each other's facial features, realizing with pleasure that they had a lot in common. A new feeling, previously inaccessible to them, stirred their souls and inspired them. The joy of now having another loved one who will not betray, who will always support, who simply is. Karina, in turn, spoke about her life and made her sister suspicious of her negligent husband's intentions. Alina frowned and shook her head sadly. What a scoundrel! Then I thought and asked my sister. What to do next? Maybe we can somehow track him? Karina sighed. Who's going to do this? He recognizes me immediately. Come on me, suggested Alina with burning eyes and continued, noticing the girl's incredulous look. What? While school is on vacation, I'm free as the wind. I'm going to dress in rags. I played Baba Yaga at the New Year's party. I'm going to pretend I'm homeless. I can also make my baby bump pregnant woman with a pillow to look more natural. Karina did not want to agree to such an adventure. She was afraid of putting her sister in danger. Time passed. There was no other plan. Three weeks later, Alina finally managed to persuade her. The raid was successful. The newly minted beggar managed to find out something about the widower, heir to the restaurant. After that, they developed a plan. Alina would quietly run the restaurant disguised as a slut. But with Pavel's light hand, she unexpectedly got the chance to observe Karina's husband from the inside. 
Returning late at night from her new job, my sister happily recounted all the details of the day. But Karina reacted to this news completely differently. You're not going there again, she said. Why? Everything is working so wonderfully. My sister was surprised. You don't understand. Now I don't know what's going on in this man's head and what else he's capable of. Karina paused and added calmly, I don't want anything to happen to you. A tear suddenly shone in his eyes. Alina hugged her sister and reassured her. You, my dear, everything will be fine. The main thing is that we are together now. After hugging each other, the girls sat for a long time, discussing further actions. Then Karina suddenly remembered her school admirer Kalenka. One of his former colleagues once mentioned that he now worked as a police investigator. It all came together in my head. That's who could really help. But all previous contacts were lost along with the phone drowned in the river. These are the realities of civilization. Now no one trains their memory and memorizes telephone numbers, as before. Karina was still weak and could not appear in the city. But the sister managed surprisingly quickly to find the young investigator Nikolai Ardyashenko to convey greetings from a former classmate. It was impossible to tell from his facial expression whether he was happy with the news of his first love or not. But judging by the fact that that very night, he ran to a small village many miles from the city, he cared. Kolya, is that you? exclaimed the girl, barely recognizing in the mature, broad-shouldered man the same indecisive, thin admirer who accompanied her home from school. I am, he smiled awkwardly approaching and taking Karina's hand. Looking into her bottomless eyes, he thought that they had become even more incredible and attractive. Former love, huddled somewhere in the depths of a vulnerable soul in adolescence, woke up and, spreading its wings, flew to freedom. Unlike Karina, he hasn't lost sight of his former classmate in recent years. I found out about his impending marriage immediately after returning from abroad. And after the news of her death, depression haunted him for several months, until Alina appeared at the department as an envoy. Nikolai and Karina talked until evening. At first they discussed the accident and the operation to resuscitate the girl. Then they simply fondly recalled their carefree youth. Now the girl noticed the admiring look and the warm, affectionate hand of the school admirer, gently squeezing her palm, in a completely different way. The extraordinary energy that emanated from him enveloped her in a blanket of serenity and calm. How stupid she was before. I was looking for true love somewhere far away and was flattered by Pavel's charismatic appearance and loose tongue. When a truly loving man was always discreetly appearing nearby, ready to help at a moment's notice. Nikolai examined Karina's car, which was found with difficulty 200 meters from the accident site. The suspicions were fully confirmed. The brake cylinder was deliberately damaged, which led to the failure of the brake system and an accident. Accustomed to the role of spy, Alina, in turn, quickly realized that not everything was so simple in the new club. An observant girl, to whom no one else paid attention, managed to find out that Pavel, trying to fill the gap in his pocket, got involved with the drug trafficking mafia and began selling substances there. She even managed to find out when the goods were delivered. The drug dealer was exactly that suspicious stranger. The last delivery was the day before the wedding, but Nikolai had to risk his shoulder straps to stop a high-ranking official at the wedding. But everything went exactly according to plan. After discovering a large batch of white powder packaged in the director's office, Pavel confessed everything. Instead of a resort vacation, he now faced a long prison sentence. This is what happens when, in search of a carefree life, you start using the most monstrous means. The sisters couldn't stand it and ran towards each other in the street, laughed through their tears, and hugged each other. They hadn't seen each other for several months only calling each other during that time. First Karina and Nikolai went on vacation, which coincided with their honeymoon. Then Alina went to another city to pick up Alexei, 
who was invited to take part in a cooking show on television, then work problems constantly distracted the two sisters and never there was time to find. During this period, they missed each other so much that they agreed to live next door and swore never to be separated again. Hugging her sister, Karina suddenly pointed to Alina's small belly, visible under the open cloak. What are you doing? Are you impersonating someone again? Alina laughed happily and replied, Now I'm portraying a future mother. In fact, there are going to be twins. Yesterday at the ultrasound, they said, Karina looked tenderly at her sister, leaned over and whispered softly in her ear, Just never separate them. She smiled sadly, understanding her perfectly. Before, she didn't realize what a miracle it is when you have a sister. This is a special and inexplicable relationship. This is friendship, reliability, support, and love. They can only be characterized by one comprehensive and valuable word, family. No matter what happens in life, sisters and brothers must stick together.